بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هنتكلم النهاردة عن بارت 3 of neonatal resuscitation we in the last lecture we talking about we uh, about the initial assessment and the initial uh, steps uh, then we when indication of the positive visual ventilation and Mr. Soba and corrective ventilation step, steps and we reach it until we reach it the uh, laryngeal mask and intubation or the alternative uh, airway just we need to uh, remind you about this uh, graph which call it uh, flow graph of the neonatal resuscitations then we'll go to the indications for alternative airway uh, from the start before the baby is delivered I have to prepare four things I have to prepare myself I have to prepare the parents. I have to communicate with OP-GYN doctor. I have to communicate with my team and have to prepare my uh, equipment. So it's 4B, parents, and you have to do antenatal counseling to discuss with parents regarding the uh, complications and the mortality, morbidity, and the short and long term of the, uh, the such uh, condition, especially if the extreme premature uh, baby. The second P, actually, it's a, a, a prenatal history. I have to communicate with the ob doctor to know uh, it's single or not, term or not, incornium or not, there's risk factor or not. It will help me if single or not, this means if twin, I have to uh, prepare one t uh, another uh, team to receive the another baby. There is uh, meconium. If there is supposed to be, I have to prepare one skilled person for uh, intubations. Uh, uh, if there is uh, a term or not, if the premature baby need special resources, special skilled persons, special additional uh, resources and equipment, especially for the thermoregulations and oxygenation and uh, ventilation. After I communicate with the parents, after I communicate with the, uh, the ob doctor, I have to communicate with my team, the, the briefing, briefing of the team. So I will tell them I received a call from the ob doctor regarding one baby is preterm, 23 weeks, is going to deliver. After five minutes, it will be the deliver in the liver room. So uh, I have to uh, uh, do what's called behavioral skills behavioral skills what is this behavioral skills i have to know my environment i have to know my limitation i have to be a professional of panic i have to use the all information or available information and resources i have to uh, uh, choose and uh, the team leader and also to delegate the work and communicates and allocate the person one person responsible for uh, warmth another person for clear the way another person he will do the stimulation another person who will go for oxygenation one person for uh, ventilation another one for intubation one for insertion of the line one for recording one for registering and all of this so i have to uh, delegate and allocate my team and to communicate effectively closed loop uh, communication with my uh, team after i finish the uh, all this baby is not delivered yes still not delivered i have to do 4b before b before baby deliver i communicate with the parents i communicate with the ob i communicate with my team i have to prepare my uh, equipment i have to do equipment check list uh, i will check the equipment for warmth i have to check the equipment for clear the airway i have to equipment for the uh, dryness and simulation i have to check for uh, stethoscope for auscultation i have to check for oxygenation ventilations and uh, intubation and alternative air uh, way so we'll go step this is before the baby deliver the baby is delivered now at birth i have to do what's call it initial assessment what is initial assessment? We said A, B, C. A, age, is a term or not? Yani is the baby's term or not? Then breathing or not? Crying or not? Kicking or not? Is this mean have good tone? Yani term and good, uh, good, good tone and term and uh, crying and uh, uh, breathing or breathing. So this is three uh, initial assessment. I have to confirm it. The baby's term, good tone, and crying or uh, breathing. Any mother like her baby to be cry 
and kicking crying and kicking crying this means breathing kicking this means good tone and will be for sure stern say if the baby is crying and kicking turn baby so it will go for we call it uh, uh, to the mother for uh, routine care positioning the way dry and ongoing uh, uh, ongoing evaluation and to maintain his normal uh, temperature it's okay so if this baby is turn crying kicking mother for routine care, ongoing evaluations, and all of this. If one of the three is affected, I have to put the baby on the radiant warmer and start the initial uh, step. Say the baby is uh, preterm or he is having uh, not having good tone, is not kicking, not crying, is not breathing, is no respiratory effort, and have to put uh, him, but start the initial steps. Provide five, provide warm positioning clear the airway if necessary dry stimulations and re re move the weight line and uh, reassess the uh, the baby so provide warm positioning clear the airway dry stimulate move with linen reposition the baby start to evaluate the baby heart rate and respiration and oxygenation Talata, uh, evaluation three evaluation heart rate respiration and uh, oxygenation so if the baby abnic will check that breathing baby abnic gasping heart rate less than 100 this indication for positive pressure ventilation what is the indication for positive pressure ventilation baby abnic gasping heart rate is less than uh, 100 so or if the baby is not improving after you give free flow oxygen or if the baby was him in sebab and not maintained his uh, saturation and start to be uh, abnic or uh, or gasping you have to give positive pressure ventilation so this is the indication of positive pressure ventilation baby abnic gasping heart rate is 100 so i have to give positive pressure ventilation once you hear positive pressure ventilation you have to put the baby on pulse oximeter Pulse oximeter with post pressure ventilation. If the preterm baby, you have to put the pulse oximeter means the baby is pre uh, delivered. But in the full term baby, once you are start to or to give post pressure ventilation, you have to connect him to pulse oximeter in the right hand and monitor the situation and the heart rate and to consider the ECG or electronic cardiac uh, monitor. Top. If the baby is breathing and the heart rate more than 100 but labored breathing difficult breathing have distress tachypnea distress so you put him in sebab uh, and you have also connected to pulse oximeter and to monitor the uh, oxygen uh, monitoring and you have to do the position and clear the airway Top. Baby is breathing and heart rate is more than 100. Just only uh, the problem is and not uh, not having a liberty breathing. Just only he cannot maintain his saturation or the target range saturations. And we said that one minute target saturation is 60 to 65. Five minutes target saturation is 80 to 85. Ten minutes uh, target oxygen saturation is 85 to 95. So the baby is not maintain heart rate uh, breathing, heart rate more than 100, and do not maintain his saturation. I have to give free flow uh, oxygen i'd call it oxygen supplementations 10 liter per minute free flow of oxygen we mentioned how much oxygen you give if the term it will be 21 if the pre uh, if more than 35 will be 21 if less than 35 it will be 21 to 30 percent and the new guidelines in 2020 it will be depend on the preterm actually it's like the golden hour uh, preterm 32 more than 32 or less than 32 more than 32 it will be 21 to 21 uh, percent it's less than uh, 22 it will be uh, 21 to 30 percent unless the baby is required chest compression i have to give 100 percent uh, oxygen so the baby is uh, abnic not pressing and heart rate is 100 post pressure ventilation and connect pulse oximeter and to consider ecg baby is breathing and the heart rate is more than 100 but the breathing is liberal or difficult uh, especially a premature babies i put in CPAP. baby is breathing and the uh, heart rate more than 100 and just only is not maintain his saturation i have give supplemental of uh, oxygen so 
بيبي افتر ذات اي ويل اسيس افتر وي جيت بوزيتيف فنتيليشن 30 سكند اي اسيس ذا هارت ريت اف ذا هارت ريت ليس ذان 100 اي هاف تو تشيك ذا شيست موفمنت اند اي هاف تو دو فور فنتيليشن كوريكتيف ستيبس اف نيدد ذن افتر ذا كوريكتيف فنتيليشن ستيبس مايت هي نيد اير واي اولترناتيف اير واي اي تي تي اور لارينجال لارينجال ماسك اف نيدد طب the heart rate more than 100 so the post resuscitation care and I will do team debriefing there is difference between team briefing and team debriefing the team briefing I have to correct the action team debriefing I have to correct the thinking because uh, uh, this is the time post resuscitation care patient is stable now I have to correct what is happening what is going uh, well what is went well what uh, how to correct our uh, thinking طب. Heart rate is below 100. I get a get both pressure ventilations. I check the chest movement. I do the corrective ventilation steps. I do the alternative airway. Still, the heart rate is less than 60. This means I have to intubate, and the the heart rate less than 60 in spite of 30 second of both pressure ventilations. I have to do four things. So. Uh, increase oxygen to 100, I call for help and I connect the uh, ECG uh, monitoring, consider intubation, if no intubation, I have to insert UVC. We'll go for the, uh, the other uh, issues here. Uh, this is if you give positive pressure of ventilation, we are going to give positive pressure of ventilation. The, what is the indication for post pressure ventilation? We said baby abnic, gasping, heart rate less than 100, or the oxygen saturation is not maintained or not reached to the target level after you give uh, free flow oxygen or you give CPAP. So, after I give post pressure ventilation, after 15 seconds, I they call it the first assessment after heart rate, after 15 seconds of post pressure ventilation, if the heart rate is increasing, so I have to announce heart rate is increasing. I continue post pressure ventilation. I will do second heart rate assessment after another 15 uh, seconds of post pressure ventilation. The heart rate is not increasing and chest is moving. I have to announce heart rate is not increasing and chest movement and there is there is chest movement. So you have to continue post pressure ventilation uh, to continue the movement of the chest and do second heart rate assessment after another 15 seconds of post pressure ventilation. You will be the same the previous one. It's uh, the heart rate increasing, continue post pressure ventilation until the second heart rate assessment after another 15 seconds. If the heart rate not increasing but the chest movement is there is chest move and there is chest rising, I have to continue or post pressure ventilation for uh, another 15 seconds uh, of the second heart rate assessment after another 15 uh, seconds of post pressure ventilation. If no heart rate, not heart rate increasing, chest movement not increasing, I have to announce heart rate not increasing, the chest movement is not uh, increasing, so I have to do ventilation corrective steps, uh, we call it Mr. Soba, until movement is started with post pressure ventilation. If not, I have to do the alternative airway, I have to intubate the patient. If I get difficult to intubate the patient, I have to insert laryngeal uh, mask, then I announce when the chest is moving, and I will continue post pressure ventilation until the, the chest movement uh, uh, be visible, uh, and second heart rate assessment after 30 seconds of post pressure ventilation is uh, done it's okay so after 15 seconds if uh, indication of post pressure ventilation baby abnic gasping heart rate is 100 so this is indication of post pressure ventilation i will do the first assessment of heart rate after 15 seconds heart rate is increasing i have to continue post pressure ventilation for second heart rate assessment after another 15 second to complete 30 second so if the heart rate not increase and there is just move, I have to continue post pressure ventilation until second heart heart rate assessment after another 15 seconds. If the no heart rate, no chest movement, I have to do corrective steps until I reach the alternative airway. I have to continue post pressure ventilation. I will continue uh, uh, to assessment for the uh, second assessment, the heart rate after 30 seconds of post pressure ventilation. After 30. Uh, second of positive pressure ventilation, I have to assess the heart rate. Heart rate is 100, between 100 to 60 or less than 60. 
did uh, you remember I told you you have to memorize two numbers 160 heart rate is 100 so I have to uh, give uh, both the pressure ventilation 40 to 60 breath per minute until baby have spontaneous breathing until the baby have spontaneous breathing the heart rate is between 100 and 60 I have to assess the ventilation I will do ventilation corrective steps if necessary top if the heart rate is then 60 I will do the same same the uh, ventilation reassessment ventilation uh, corrective uh, steps i will do alternative airway i have to intubate if it's difficult to intubation i have to give to insert the laryngeal mask if no improvement i have to uh, start chest compression increase oxygen to 100 core for help intubate the baby if not in, uh, intubated and uh, you have to go for the next uh, steps it's okay so this is uh, we we'll call it the alternative airway and we'll go uh, this is our lecture today the alternative airway what is the indication of the alternative airway when to intubate the patient when to give laryngeal mask if positive pressure ventilation uh, actually by face mask does not result in the clinical improvement you cannot appreciate any physiological improvement after you get positive pressure ventilation or prolonged positive pressure ventilation you give for a few minutes and the baby is not improvement you have to intubate the patient if chest compression are necessary if the heart rate is in 60 despite of 30 second of positive pressure ventilations if there is special consideration such as diaphragmatic hernia or surfactant administration this is the indication of the alternative airway or indication of intubation what is the indication of intubation if Boost the of ventilation, ineffective boost the of ventilation, prolonged boost the of ventilation for a few seconds, or the, there is indication for chest compression. If you heart rate less than 60, despite 30 seconds of boost the of ventilation, you have to start the chest compression. So you have to intubate the baby if you give chest compression. You have to intubate before you give chest compression. Your baby should be, or not intubate, you have to intubate it. If the baby need chest compression. If there is special consideration like the phlegmatic hernia and surfactant administration, this one of the indication for uh, uh, intubation. It's okay. So indication of intubation prolonged BB, uh, both visual ventilation and no physiological, uh, no physiological improvement. Intubation. So I'm going now to intubate the baby. I have to prepare for intubation. I have to prepare the equipment. Appropriate blade, laryngoscope, ETT. Appropriate ETT, as we mentioned, there is if the uh, weight of the baby is less than one kilo, you have to you choose the 2.5. If the baby between one and two kilo, I have to choose three. If the baby more than or greater than two kilo. I have to choose 3.5 this is the internal uh, diameter or millimeter so I have to choose the, the blade I have to choose the ATT I have to choose the laryngoscope I have to hold the laryngoscope by in, uh, the left hand then I have to position the baby it will be a sniffing position not hyper extend not hyper flex it will be semi uh, extend so after that i have to secure the tube i have to put tip to lip I, in, the, in the depths of the the tube i have to visualize the vocal cord so i have to confirm the tube is in by uh, so2 detector so detector it will be purple purple uh, it's mean problem and it will turn it uh, to yellow if the tube is in it's will turn it to yellow it will be yellow if the tube is in so purple is mean the baby problem Yellow, this means yes, your, the, your tube is, uh, is in. So I have to finish my procedure or intubation within 30 seconds. The timing is very crucial and important in intubation of such uh, tiny baby, babies, especially in the premature babies. So the time allowed for intubation is 30 seconds. So I have to prepare for intubation, appropriate size of the tubes, appropriate uh, mask, appropriate blades, appropriate lingoscope, the bright uh, light is, will be bright. I have to position the baby in the sniffing position. I have to visualize the, the, the cord. I have to insert, be sure the tube, I have to insert it. I have to confirm the tube is in. I have to fix the tube tip to lip and all of this, you have to uh, be sure uh, ab about it. That's okay. So now I intubate the baby. So I, I have to uh, be confirmed the tube, uh, the, the tip to lip. Tip to lip. Before 
in the previous NRB, it's the six plus the weight. This is the depth of the tube. Now this is uh, because we are seeking for the accuracy and more reliable. This is the more reliable and accurate measure. We call it nasal tragus lens. Nasal and the nasal septum two tragus lens plus one it will give you the depth of insertion using uh, the tips of insertion of the tube Con tip to lip this is one is uh, either to use the special formula and this is the formula nasal to tragus lens plus one and this is will be uh, detect the tips of the tube or tip to lip another way to uh, to know the depth of the tube by gestational age for example if the baby is 23 to 24 weeks and the 500 600 gram so the uh, the in the tip to lip or the tube dips it will be 5.5 uh, so this is the two ways to know the depths of the ATT either to use this, the formula of the nasal tragus length plus one or to use the gestational age. You have two optional. Before was the weight plus the uh, the, uh, the six, but nowadays for we are seeking for the accuracy of the depth of the tube, we are using nasal to tragus uh, length. This is the alternative or advanced airway intubation recommended before chest compression. More, once you chest compression is indicated this is you have to intubate uh, the baby if intubation is not successful or not visible على طول immediately you have to use the laryngeal mask airway it's okay so after i insert the tube and uh, i confirm the tube is in uh, so i have if the baby after intubation is having sudden deterioration after intubation this is sudden deterioration after intubation this is dubi we call it dubi this dubi is mnemonic has been uh, adapted from uh, adopted from pediatric advanced life support guideline for use assessment of infant who deteriorates after intubations uh, and this causes actually dubi it's displacement of the intracranial tube obstruction of the endotracheal tube, pneumothorax or equipment failure. This means problem in the tube or problem in the patient or problem in the system. Bro problem in the tube, displaced or obstructed. Problem in the baby is having pneumothorax. Problem in the equipment is this equipment failure. This means ventilator problems or all of this. This will tell you if there is sudden deterioration of the baby after intubation, you have to think what is the cause of this sudden deterioration. It's called it dubi, displacement of the tube, obstruction of the tube, pneumothorax, equipment uh, failure. So the uh, laryngeal mask, what is the indication for uh, laryngeal mask or consider alternative airway? Uh, the first thing actually if there is uh, positive pressure ventilation is ineffective ineffective positive pressure ventilation or face mask ventilation unsuccessful if you give positive pressure ventilation or you give face mask ventilation is unsuccessful or if you ha you try to intubate the baby and is not visible and it's difficult to intubate the baby it's the alternative way it's you can use the laryngeal uh, mask the third indication if you have congenital abnormalities if they have especially in the mouth like the beer robin syndrome the trisomy the mandible is small the tongue uh, is is large this is will be difficult or or facial or upper airway malformation so it's difficult for bag mask so or an infective bag mask so this is indication for laryngeal mask so if both the of ventilation is infective <clears throat> Intubation is not visible if the baby have congenital abnormalities. So there's one problem, uh, one uh, issues related to the doctor, related to the patient. Related to the doctor, <coughs> he cannot intubate the patient because uh, not visible uh, intubations or the patient has uh, anomalies. So the problem with the patient having facial abnormalities or upper ear abnormalities. So I cannot intubate the baby. So uh, the second problem or the doctor is cannot intubate the baby or he attempt many times so that you can use the laryngeal mask or both bridge of ventilation are is not effective and ineffective and the baby cannot uh, improve this is the indication for laryngeal mask the most important for laryngeal mask should be the baby more than 34 weeks or more than 2 kg or nowadays it's, it's less than 1.8 1.5 now but uh, uh, it's proper or appropriate if the baby more than 34 and more than uh, 2 kg 
So uh, high priorities uh, in uh, in resuscitation, as we mentioned, uh, high priorities in neonatal resuscitation is established effective ventilation. This is the highest priorities of neonatal resuscitation. The most important thing in the neonatal resuscitation is establishing effective ventilation. And it may take longer than 30 seconds to establish the effective ventilation. May, may need more than 30 seconds. As I mentioned, the initial steps will take 30 seconds, and after that, we'll give both the ventilation for another 30 seconds. We we'll call the golden minute. And the, after that, you evaluation the ventilation. Might you need corrective action required, Mr. Soba? Don't start chest compression without first ensuring effective ventilation. What is the definition? of effective ventilations is audible bilateral breath sound and chest moving this is a correct definition of effective ventilation it's audible bilateral breath sound you have to examine from the axilla from the axilla area you have to hear the uh, audible bilateral air uh, i'm not call it air entry i'm calling breath sound is written as breath sound well listen the breath sound not air entry breath sound and just movement so what is the definition of effective ventilation effective ventilation is means audible bilateral breath sound and uh, chest uh, movement so and chest movement so uh, by, by uh, this we now we reach it to uh, almost the uh, finishing our uh, part three of uh, neonatal resuscitation we are talking about the alternative uh, airway when to intubate the patient when to use a laryngeal mask how to intubate the patient if into how to confirm the intubation how to do know this is the the tube is out and uh, how uh, to know if the baby happened to him uh, sudden uh, deterioration after intubation, you have to think about the doobie, and this is very uh, important and uh, crucial. Next lecture, we'll talk about the uh, chest compression. Shukran, salam alaikum.